neck in the back of the theater. That's what we did, except him. Well, that's how I met him. He was sitting in, right down the front with his girlfriend, and he looked like a soldier with two hands in his lap, minding his own, but watching the bloody movie. So he became the joke of half, and they knew he was a cop. And there he was, sitting like a, <laughs> we couldn't believe it. So that's how I met him, because everybody dared me. They said, see if you can warm him up. And so. See if you can warm him up? <laughs> Oh, you... <laughs> I guess the elementary school you went to was... I went to Cedar Park at the bottom of our street. And in my senior years, I went to John Rennie, which was new. I was the first student at John Rennie, the first year. We were the first year that went to John Rennie when John Rennie opened. So I started at the bottom of my street, Cedar Avenue, finished at John Rennie, which was at the top of St. John. So walk both ways. We didn't have buses in those days. You walked. Really? So, yeah, we walked. There was no such Not thing. even, I thought there were buses like for the Valois kids or... Well, maybe for the Valois kids, but I didn't live there. For Cedar, Cedar Avenue, we didn't get buses to go to the school down below on Cedar Avenue, nor did we get them to go to John Rennie, because I was very jealous. Maybe the Val Valois kids, quite often, probably, we always had to walk. They considered we were close enough. And, and describe the, uh, were there even sidewalks at the time, or? Uh, certainly not on, I don't think on Cedar Avenue. There must have been on St. John's Road. I honestly can't remember the sidewalks. I guess maybe on St. John's they would all, almost had to. That was sort of when things were being built up, when the sh little shopping center started with the head. It was an open shopping center. It wasn't closed as it is now. And, and uh, John Rennie, there was basically hardly anything, anything else there. And I guess it started building up from there, you know. So you, were in, you went to John Rennie before that shopping center was even built up? Yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I And did. before the city hall was there? Yes. Definitely. It was just a high school? It's just a high school, that's right. Exactly, exactly. I suppose they had plans at that point. When you're 13, 14, 15, you don't really think about those things. I remember going to the high school and it was such a thrill because we used to change classes because in grade school, you never change classes. But at high school, you got to change. We thought that was great fun for about a year and then... It got old hat and high school, you know, but it, it <laughs> was it became a, high school. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But to us, it was brand new. Uh, that's right. High school. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So when I literally lived, because if I don't, if you, it's worth a drive up Cedar. I don't know if you've been up Cedar Avenue, mm -hmm. but if you drive up Cedar, we were the, we're now we would now be the the absolute house on the twenty, the 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 twenty the 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 the, the new circle round on the twenty behind Cedar. It goes past our house. You can see the barn that we had built. They're still there, and the house is still there. The house, what we had done, we had built um, when we had we had a uh, double garage, and my mother went to England. And when she came back, we'd taken a double garage, made a half a garage, and put a stable in the back for my horse. And uh, as I believe it's still there. I often pass by. If you go on that roundabout behind uh, on the highway to St. John's, to head up St. John's, you go right behind our house. And you can see it, because it's way up high. And it's kind of, and because uh, we were three houses in a row, and the first house was taken up by the overpass. You know, the uh, circuit roundabout behind? Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the first house, our next, that was 105 seater, and we were 99 seater. They're huge properties. We had an acre of land, and it's still there. An acre of so land. So none of your land was expropriated? Was no, it? our neighbor 105, all of it. So we became right on the highway. But what, what, 105 that was beside of my neighbor, my best friend I grew up with, hers was gone, just gone. I got married in 64, so I probably wasn't thinking, I don't, certainly don't remember any construction going on. Was it starting construction in 61, was it? Earliest would be end of 60. Really? Because by 61, 62, it was there. Okay, I, lived, I got married in 64, and I was living on Cedar Avenue until then. But I do not remember, the, I don't remember the expropriation, it must have happened, but I don't remember the expropriation. So, where were you born? Born okay. right there, 99 Cedar Avenue. And when, when did your, your parents came to Franklin? They came to Canada from England, went straight to Toronto, and about the early 40s, they, they, they moved to Cedar Avenue. They bought that place in Cedar Avenue. And it was always, and they, uh, we stayed there all, I stayed there all my married life. My father died very early. But as I say, we used that place, my mother did, during the war, after the war, it must have been after the war, say 45, 46. And we used to have the soldiers come in school buses to our property, and my mother would, would uh, serve tea and cookies, she was British, 
it's tea and cookies. And there's, I remember the, that I would have probably been five or six, and I'd see the soldiers with no legs and soldiers in wheelchairs. And, and it was a hospital from St. Andrew Bell. Remember the, the um, yeah. So they would come in school in buses to our place. I don't know a couple of what times. What was the connection? Well, nothing. It's just a sort of volunteer thing that pe people oh. did in those days for for to help the wounded soldiers from the war. So and we had a big property, and we I used to have a goat and um, rabbits and all kinds of stuff. As it was a big it was a big problem. You could do that sort of thing then, but you you know and there were bylaws I guess for. They they were very we we didn't know about bylaws but it was a it was a, a very nice community and if you go up that street now I know that uh, 105 is gone 99 is still there where I was and 91 so we were three big properties in a row and uh, we were the only ones that had all the soldiers because we had the biggest I think it's an acre of land which is a lot and I think it's still I don't think they sold any of it. So as a, as a child with big land like that, did you stay on your land or, did you, or were there different parks that you would go to? No, we, we, ever, we, we, as a kids, we, we did everything. I mean, every, all the kids, the neighbor came home. Matter of fact, our three properties had swimming pools and our first neighbor on the, on the road, he had a nice one, uh, but homemade, you know, for us kids. Ours, my father made a kind of a cement hole and the, all the neighbors brought their dogs to swim in ours. And, 91 Cedar, which was my next neighbor, they had a beautiful Olympic sized pool, probably still do, and all the adults got to swim in that one and have cocktail hours. But ours was for animals. <laughs> we, it was a great neighborhood. It was a very friendly, great neighborhood. Was really the was. water still uh, accessible? Uh, uh, at that adventure? time that we owned our property, we also owned a small piece of land at the very bottom because it came with, when we purchased 99 Cedar, we got a small piece of land at the bottom of Cedar. That has been take, gone. That's gone now. I think it's, somebody down there must have bought it. But I know it was on our on our deed for a long time. Did you go to the beaches along the, the waterfront? I never. Beach is a big word. We, we had <laughs> this twenty feet of, of land that my father had a cheapy cheapy little sailboat for us down there, and we'd go down sometimes. But truthfully, we stayed mostly on our on our our property or my neighbor's property, and uh, it was so free and. Uh, and we used to go under the tunnel, to go under the highway, and go upstairs. And you could go by that. You could go up north and see all the farmers' fields and all that sort of stuff. And you know, as I remember, we didn't move much off Cedar until we were teenagers. Once we were teenagers, then we we did as much as we were allowed to. I can remember that. Yeah. So, uh, what was there for teenagers at the time? Well, or for your, I, for I, your group, let's say. Well, I, I was very keen on, on horses and stuff, so as soon as I could, I, I'd get it, go out and go riding and go anything. So that was totally different. Other te some teenagers, I guess, hung around, I don't know where, Valois, I guess, would they, there were a gang in Valois, but we really didn't mix, as I was telling you before, we, nor did we mix with the French Canadians in the village. I have no idea what they did at all until mid-teens. And then why why the division now now it's seamless right I I'm, now I'm sure it's it is all, it's all seamless it's all point well, of I mean there's yeah. there's these areas named uh, you know there's the yeah. Dallas zone yeah. where they have different councillors but in your day it really was Point Claire village was Point Claire village and that was strictly French Canadian and the, the adults went there for for their for the stores and things and maybe you got to drive down the village on a Saturday morning maybe but it was only had the Kinsman Park the Kinsman Park was great and they used to be right next to the old police station in on the on the Lakeshore Road. So then every, all the teenagers went there. But so I'm confused by this this park because yeah. that's where they put the filtration plant, right? I think so. I think so. so yeah. And and because this is north of the high, of, of Lakeshore. No, the 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 it was on the side where the, the I remember the park. It was on a little piece of land on the, as you're looking at it. It would be on the left hand side of the the old police station. I don't know if you have pictures of that old police station with the swinging green door and the do you have, yeah, so the fire trucks. So and, if you're looking at the police station yeah. and the, your back is to the water. Yeah. It's no, if I'm looking at the police station, say coming down Carche, if you're looking at the police station, which would mean to your left. Yeah, you turn to your yeah. left. Yes, and, to, and then it's right, was right to the. the it was past the, that, just east of that. Yes, that's right. And the, it was called Kinsman Park. Well, it the was where the Kinsmen had their tennis. every every year, they had a week's, you know, tombola, it was called, I don't know, you know, they had. You know, things you shove, throw balls at, you know, things and th knock things off and eat cotton candy, that kind of thing, you know. Was this something you really looked forward oh, to? Oh, yes, because there was nothing really, yes, I, um, all of us looked forward to How that. How excited were you about the tumble? 
Uh, like, you find the tumble and say, what yeah. is it? It's next week. Is it next weekend? When? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Weekend? Everybody went. And when you were young teens, like 10, 11, 12, you were very excited to go. And when you were older teens, you kind of went to see, see, hang out and see who you could see and talk to who you could talk, you know? I, I don't know. I, I know the Valwa kids were totally different from us. That we didn't hardly ever mix a bit in school. But uh, I, I always remember because I didn't fit in very well because I was a non-athlete. I was a non-student. I really was a bit useless. <laughs> the only, the, <laughs> I, I, so the only thing I fit in with is, is the, the bad kids. And the bad kids all came from Valwa. You know, all, all the bad English, all the bad English kids came from. I don't say all English kids in Valwa were bad, but no, the bad saying, were, Okay, so you're saying if you were bad, yeah. you came from Valwa, but yeah. not all the Valwa kids were bad. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But so you know. Well, so, why do you think that is? I, I don't, maybe, maybe I, I don't know. Probably a little bit lower economic scale. I'm guessing we, we were on that street not because we were wealthy. My, my husband thought we were wealthy. Everybody on the top, that top well, street. I think they thought the, the Anglophones. Yes, they did. All they all we did. Wealthy. We weren't all. I remember he thought before he met me that we were rich. We got married in that house, and all his friends came in. And they were sure that we were stinking. We were far from, but. My father, was, well, he's a movie producer, there you go, he, that's what he did for a living. But the neighbors on both sides were much wealthier than we were. But he happened to get a, a good piece of land and he wanted to bring his kids up in a certain... Both boys went to private school, my, my brothers, and I think they must have struggled. Yeah, you must run here. No, we're Str good, we're good. Struggled and struggled to do it, but he did it. Yeah. And uh, so, but, and it was so, it was all, like, the, certainly in the village. I, I didn't know anything about the village until the first French Canadian I ever went out with. And it wasn't Julia, it was another one. And uh, it was kind of frowned on, you know. That, when, worse than being a French Canadian in my day was to be a Catholic. That was even worse. My father, had he lived, he didn't. But had he lived, he would have died if he'd known I married a French Canadian lived, Catholic. Had he lived, he would have died. Yeah. I, it it would have been a total sin. I mean, I, that would, oh, you know, but he didn't live long where, enough. To, where were the Catholics? Were they sporadic or were, were no? They well, they were. That they were all in the village, to my knowledge. I'm sure there were other Catholics around. Because the Catholic Church was in Valois. Oh, and there was St. one in the John village, Fisher. a big, big one. And, oh no, the big Catholic Church on the water in in in. Uh, oh yeah, Point so the English would go there too. No, I have no idea. I wasn't Catholic. I don't know. I had no yeah. idea. I was Protestant. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Not a very good one at that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So when, when you went to John Rennie. Yeah. And you're mixing in with all these Valois kids. Yeah. Were, were there were there groups that kind of, kind of stayed with their own? Uh, well, this say? is when you started, to, when you mix them all, this is teenage years, when you mix them all, I guess the best athletes from Valwa would mix with our best, I didn't fit in there. Then the best, student, the best students that in class, I'm sure she probably remembers, but stayed around with the best, we well, didn't fit in there either. So the only thing that I fit in was the bad kids, and the bad kids were from Valwa, and I, I was dying to be one of those. But of course, I wasn't allowed out at night, and these kids, half of them didn't have parents, never mind, I wasn't, never, I wasn't allowed to go out. So, so describe to me what it meant to be a bad kid. Oh, I mean, they were bad, they were ripping off hubcaps and all kinds of <laughs> my, my parents would have had a stroke. I, I remember being saying one night they were going out Thursday night to, to, uh, to, to steal hubcaps, and, and Saint Ville Saint Pierre, on top of that, I, I, knew, I knew it was a bad area. Ville Saint Pierre, I thought it was. I was absolutely scandalized. I said, How the hell am I going to get out? I'm not allowed out except to go to church. And I, I, I sold church calendars on a Thursday night. So for all summer long, I take my hat and my church calendar, shove them under a rock at the bottom of a 99 seater, take off with not to seal. We, I didn't get there. Take off with this kids. You know, just causing havoc. Come back in, put my hat back on, take my calendars, <laughs> go back in the house. <laughs> but I, well, I didn't end up doing anything because they didn't think I was that cool either because I wasn't pretty wild, you know. Well, what did you do last? I sold church calendars. I never actually sold a single church calendar in my life, but I had them for a good summer. But So I didn't really fit in anyway, but I, where I yeah. did fit in was with the horses. Yeah. And so... I started the good horses or the bad the good horses, horses. Like all horses. No, I, I so I met a friend whose mother took us riding, and I learned to ride. Yeah. And then from there, it was just horses. And so were my kids, my grandkids, everything's in horses. What was the? This is this is the fifties you're talking about. Yes. You graduated high school. What year? Uh, 1958. 58. Okay. So when you were in high school, yeah. it was the perfect era for the teenager. That was yeah. the birth of the teenager. Yes, you're right, you're right, except I didn't fit in. Yes, you're right, absolutely right. But but the birth of the teenager is also connected with 
uh, not so much uh, the hockey and the sports, no. but it's connected more with uh, uh, the rebellious side of Yes, I, was a I had a large dollar for that, yeah. Where, where, you know, the clothes is a little different, yeah. oh, the yes. hair is a little different, and the music was definitely yeah. a little different. Yeah. So, yeah. so tell me if something, was, was music big with you and the rock and roll? And this well, I didn't like rock and roll. I like Western then and I like Western now, but I did, that didn't fit in either. But I, <laughs> and the clothes, <laughs> I remember the clothes because... Uh, Every time a new fad would come in, I remember when they had, way back when, when I say it was 12, 13, they had the, the penny loafer. Well, by the time I got the penny loafer, which I was saved for you to get my damn penny loafer so I'd fit in with the kids, they were into saddle shoes or whatever, and so now I had to start all over. So I just was a complete misfit. Complete misfit. <laughs> Probably still am. Yeah, oh no, it was awful. <laughs> what about the, the, the dances? At the uh, well, club? they had the school dances. With, there was the dances in, in the village. Oh, I never went to a, d no. In the clubhouse. Did they? I, did, I didn't know anything about that. I'm sure I did. I wasn't allowed out. I'm telling you, I was not allowed out. We, none of us were at the top of Cedar Avenue. You didn't go anywhere. I, no, I never even heard of them. But I, I couldn't dance either. So I didn't, oh, oh, I was useless. So I've, I've actually heard this before, that, that the West Island at that time uh, was great if you were an athlete. Mm -hmm. But, Absolutely. But if you weren't an athlete, no, you didn't fit in. I mean, you just didn't. For you. No, no. And I, I mean, I was. I, I remember in school, the the two girls called the Hustweight twins all the way through grade school. All and I loved those Hustweight twins because they were more useless than I was. And when get when it got to be choosing teams, you know how you get choose teams. I was always chosen before them. Always. <laughs> Always, always, and I love those. For them. I love those Hustweight twins. And I have to tell you, we went. For, well, I guess it was 25 years after the graduate. Uh, we went to a, um, you know, graduation. Did 50, 25 years celebration of the, uh, of uh, yeah, John Randy graduation. And the funny, there was this absolutely fantastic looking woman. You, the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. You know, she had stiletto heels that high. She was. Skinny, slim, beautiful, with a handsome man, and everybody say, "Who's that? Who's that?" I had no idea. I'd never seen it before in my life. It was one of the Hustery twins, and she married a doctor in Toronto. She must be in there saying, "Eat your heart out." The two most popular people at that dance were my husband, who was a policeman. I never went to John Rennie in his life, but everybody seemed to know him, and this Hustery twin girl <laughs> at that graduation, at that anniversary, twenty-five year anniversary of John Rennie. Huh? No, it, it was different then. We didn't have cars, I guess, maybe until the last year. John Rennie, some of them did, but you know, we didn't. You know, we didn't. Uh, I don't think it was cool to ride a bicycle after the age of twelve. So, so bo both your parents were married in England. Yep, and, and came to Canada. Why did they? Did, did you ever ask them why they decided uh, where they ended up buying? Or? Oh, oh I, and Cedar Avenue. I don't. I think probably wasn't all that expensive. And he wanted to, to live. He came from Toronto, which made it look cheaper and on Cedar Avenue. And he, I guess he just found this place, and really, it was it was too an expensive area for us. I know he struggled all his life, and my mother, he died when he was 50, so he died after 10 years there. And, uh, no, he's more than 10 years. I'm, no, I'm, I, he was, no, sorry. He, they moved, they must have moved there in 40, around 40, 41, because I know they came just before, when the war started, and they left Europe for that reason. They went to Toronto first, and then came to Montreal, and they found they it. the Blitz. They, Pardon? They missed the blitz. Yes, I guess, yeah. And, uh, wow. And so, and my mother was very involved in Point Claire, the City Hall, the uh, the uh, Stewart Hall, sorry, and the, the public library. She was part of opening the public library. How did she get involved, or why did she get involved in that? What was I her think, background or profession? Oh, there? I think, well, they they were both, both my parents were art, artistic and musical, and uh, they made movies, actually, in Toronto, and they were in the theater group in, in, Mont in Point Claire. They had a... Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you the back of the cover of the book there. You'll see what they say. Stuff like that, you know. So uh, both of them are musical. Both were talented. They weren't athletic either, but they were talented. I have no talent either. So that's why you're a misfit. You're, were you oh, a I was a misfit team? everywhere. I couldn't sing and dance either. No, I couldn't do anything. Oh, nothing. God. There had to have been something. What but was no, it? ride a horse. Ride a horse. That's, uh, that's all I could do. I'm still, still hasn't changed. And uh, no, I was, uh, yeah, they were both, and they were dying for me to be a fe feminine, which I wasn't either. Uh, oh, it was a disaster. I was a complete disaster. <laughs> oh, yeah. My father used to say that. I remember them having an, ar the only argument, they're British, so they don't argue in public, but the only one I ever heard, I heard this discussion with the two of them, 
about me because I wasn't nearly feminine enough at say 13, 14, but my fa make my father happy. And I remember hearing my father say to her, to my mother, he's just like your, your grandfather, whatever, who was apparently a veterinarian on a, a Norwegian ship in, in the 1800s. And she said, no, she's just like your old maid sister Mabel, who was a, <laughs> and they're also there are you where I came from. That was, I was a disaster. <laughs> It, I, I survived. I survived it all. I but survived I, it all. <laughs> oh my! No, I was just as poor me, disastrous. But I yes, I did. Fight. You fa you fared out okay. I did fine. I just did fine. You married uh, the, the the yeah, and that wouldn't have gone over life. either. My poor mother. Yes, yeah, she. Oh my husband, My father would never have allowed it. Never. He would have shut me to England as fast as he could. But he was dead. So. <laughs> and and mother, we're fine. And my mother came and lived with us. The British, you know, very, very. As I say, you got along okay. Yeah, they, they used to, they, the two of them would sit for hours discussing um, opera. I hated opera. My, I, ever, I hated opera. My husband liked opera as much as my, my, my mother. So they, for years, she lived with us. And my husband, my father, who the French-Canadian Catholic cop, he couldn't imagine. I mean, so that would be better off dead than his daughter marry one of those. But luckily he didn't see it. Anyway, yeah, so I'm sure the school is the same, I'm, though I don't, if you're athletic, you're with one group, and if you're, yeah. I know that they made yeah. me join the Latin class in school, I do remember that, and there were nine nerds in me, and, and I hated that damn gut Latin class, and, oh, it was awful, so I, I dug up a dirty ditty about Latin, I was announcing it in the class when the principal walked in, so that wasn't very popular, but all these nerds, Nobody takes Latin. Do they still teach Latin in school? No, Probably not. no, I don't know when they stopped that. I don't think it... Well, I, I certainly remember those Rebel Without a Cause and all those movies. We did go to the movie theater on Point Claire Theater. Most, most teenagers in my day, we didn't go to the movie theater to actually watch the movie. We went neck in the back of the theater. That's what we did, except him. Well, that's how I met him. He was sitting in, right down the front with his girlfriend, and he looked like a soldier with his two hands in his lap, minding his own, but watching the bloody movie. So he became the joke of half, and they knew he was a cop, and there he was sitting like a, <laughs> we couldn't believe it. So that's how I met him, because everybody dared me. They said, see if you can warm him up. And so. <laughs> warm him up? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, that's what happened. <laughs> you warmed him up. <laughs> Anyway, but the, I remember because also as a policeman, the others, we were starting to flirt with them. I mean, there wasn't a whole bunch to flirt with around uh, Point Claire in those days, so quite a few of us ended up marrying those policemen. But anyway, as I say, we first saw them on the, on the street corner, chain, and he didn't respond either, that he did his job. He was the only one that everybody else was kind of at the milk bar near the, uh, eyeing the girls, and the girls were eyeing them, but not him. He was, he doesn't, so much so he doesn't even remember the milk bar. <laughs> That's how bad he was. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, no, he was pretty quiet. He's so were there any were there any of those Elvisy looking type of? Uh, yeah, it's like oh yeah, so Mao. Oh, I remember even myself as a teenager, I, my neighbors didn't like it. I slicked my hair back. They had these uh, duck asses, you know, where you slicked your hair back. You don't remember those? Oh, ones? the duck asses. Yeah, yeah, that was before. Yeah, yeah. That was before the Elvis. Back, back yeah, yeah. The yeah, 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 yeah. Like you'd have the pompadour. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, like, that's right. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. You called it the duck yeah. ass. Yeah, yeah, that's what we used to call it. Yeah. With the guys did that to the hair. You did that too. Well, we wore. Well, I wore pretty. I was pretty tall. I wore my hair pretty slick back, and I used to wear a sailor outfit often. That my neighbors were horrified of. It. I mean, I wasn't really bad because I couldn't get out. How do you be bad? You can't even get out of the house. I had to go to church, and I didn't allow. Out the house. Because now, our oh, our now. parents were. I, it must be different areas. Julian's parents, they were so busy earning a living. I don't think, and they just didn't get. They he just didn't cause trouble. Well, he arrested his own brother, but apart from that, <laughs> and he's a, now a policeman too. And you could, but anyway, um, yeah, no, but I mean, literally on our street, Cedar Avenue, you just didn't. I mean, you couldn't get out. There was absolutely no way. But we didn't. So we, we were nerds too because we couldn't do anything. Nothing. It was, the other kids, uh, some of my friends were athletic, so they get in the some. I remember we used to go skating at the park on, and um, that we did do in the winter. We'd skate. Uh, well, was that I call Kinsman Park too? And it was down Cedar and across. And there was a they had they had tennis there, and they had skating, and we used to go skating there. And that I remember doing. 
you know, some in the winter time. But no, it wasn't a very exciting teenage years until you got a little older. And then it got a little bit. But no, I and, and I don't know. Val, I think, was much more. Much parents were much more lenient. It was much less discipline, much less supervision, to my knowledge. We had. I. I you did have the part about the horse. The twice I had a horse at home. I worked. I worked at. Uh, at the oh, Grove yes. Home Hotel. I worked yeah, at the Grove Home you, Hotel. How did you get the job there? Where, where did you work and when and, and, and how did you get the I job? Got, I got the job at Grove Home Hotel. Uh, and I loved, we always joked about the name the, the name because this British owner, he hadn't got a clue what that said. Right out great big letters with Home Hotel because he meant Hotel Motel. But it's huge, and we used to get a huge kick out of it. Even at that time? Yes, yes, Homo Hotel. It was written right in big letters. So homos were homos even... Well, he didn't know. He, you know, he didn't know that. He was too dumb for that. He just thought Hotel Motel. That's a cliche. That's what, And he, it was kind of a... There, there was bo boats. I think it was the beginning of the Beaconsfield Yacht Club. What's the Beaconsfield Yacht Club, from what I know? We used to bicycle there and for $15 a week. Just I hope she's listening. $15 a week, I went three times a, a day to serve the people in his little restaurant. And the people in his little restaurant were all seniors that lived there. So we'd go down f for seven days a week for $15 a week. And I collected enough money after two months to rent a horse for one week, which I kept across the street that time. And that was in 13, 14. And then when I was 16 or 17, 17, I guess, I didn't know him before, shooting, I built a stable at the front and I brought my own horse, which I had at that time. I, as soon as I got a job, as soon as I got a job, I got a horse. That was the first thing I did. A horse first and a car after. Julien. No, me, me, but Julien, but him, he, he helped me. He took, took the, uh, I guess I started going out with him at 17 and a half, 18. I guess, and he built the second the stable. It was a, it was a, and he talked to. He built the stable at seventeen. Years well, it wasn't a stable. It was a, it was a double garage, and he took half when my mother was in England, and we made half for my horses, and, and we left her half for her car. So she was gone to England for a month. So I was in, maybe eighteen at the time. Yeah. That's and the Grove didn't last much longer after that, right? No, I think the Grove was probably gone before that. Because I, after 12, 13, I didn't go back after that year. And I think it, they were old then. I used to laugh because when the Grove Hotel, it was an old, 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 like a summer kitchen and the floors were all slippery. And so we could barely stand up. And I remember going down, I wasn't much of a waitress. I'm better, anyway, I was going down some apple, uh, tomato juice and I slipped and the tomato juice went flying over this customer. And she's, Oh, thank you. I've already had my juice, and, oh, <laughs> and the, himself, he was a bit eccentric, and he was the chief cook. He did the cooking and the cleaning, and he did everything. And he'd make the his owner? the owner, yes, Claude Hoskin, his name was, and he would make his prepare his meal. He'd go out the kitchen door. He'd come through the, the entrance for the guests, sit down and slam the table and say, "I want this and that and the other thing." And you just walk through the swinging doors, and he prepared it for himself. It was on the other side because it was always better than what he served his customers. So it was. It was. A, what was it? Was it an old folks' home? It was. I think no. It was more like a. It was more like a hotel, but permanent guests. You know, they were. They were. They were almost all permanent people. But it was sort of the beginning. That they, I don't think they had many I didn't, old folks' places in my day. But I think that was the place that people could go, and they, it was a nice property, and they could walk out. And, the, and they were all. They were all certainly. Permanent residents. I don't t think too many people walked off the street to eat there. They used to, the water was so awful, it had a rusty color. And so occasionally somebody would complain about it to me, and I said, Mr. Hoskin, they complain about the water. You tell them that I have it specially ionized for them. That's why like, it was just crappy water that, like, <laughs> it was a, he was a character and a half. <laughs>